Um, if you mean as a nation, uh, we'd love to uh, get back outside of low Earth orbit. Uh, as low Earth orbit is an important place to be to learn how to how to do space flight. So you can we can mature as a spacefaring nation, but. Uh, Regardless of the destination, whether it's Mars, an asteroid, or the moon, um, I think everybody's looking forward to, to uh, getting back beyond that. And seeing those photos and hearing the voice of the person that looks back and sees the uh, Earth as a sphere, as a ball again, um, that's an incredibly meaningful moment. And looking forward to that happen again. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there's, well, there's the outside the window strange things, and the in, and inside the cabin, um, the aurora uh, australis and the aurora borealis are the two things that uh, that really takes your breath away the first time you see it. It's, it looks very alien, uh, just uh, curtains of of this subtle faint green glow that that dance and move around as you uh, come close to the poles in your orbit. Uh, I saw a shooting star, uh, my first one actually, and that was uh, under me. Uh, it's between you and the Earth that you see it happen, go through the atmosphere. And usually you don't see anything moving except the slow motion of the Earth going by. So that, that's striking to see that. I think uh, one of the strangest things, it's a perception issue when you get up here, uh, your eyes aren't used to seeing the movements that you see here. And uh, when I first got up here, a colleague, a crewmate, went flying by me. And for a split second, my brain said, that's got to be a cat. It's got to be a panther. This big thing that's just sliding by you like that. And of course, you see it and you know what it is right away, but the perception for a split second kind of makes your heart jump and you go, what was that? And you go, oh, it's just my crewmate. Uh, so your perception gives you a lot of strange uh, alien feelings when you're inside the cabin as well. Wow. So is there an up and down for you uh, at all? Do you kind of orientate yourself to a certain uh, direction once you get familiar with the equipment and the inside of the, uh, of the space station? There are parts of the space station where there is no up and down. You, it's kind of like you're a hamster inside of a little tunnel. But places like this, you know, it might look to you like there is an up and down. But I've got a, the galley right behind me that's on the ceiling. And the longer you spend up here, the less you care uh, what the name of the surface is. They're all the same. My feet might be on what we call the deck right now, but it could be a ceiling. It could be a, a wall. It could be anything. Uh, really, and as you adapt, you get used to that, and you can just spin around and, and orient yourself very easily. So could, there's just a lot could more you show space us what no, it's like, no what it's like to be upside down? You spend here. And actually, I'm not upside down. The camera's upside down. Now the camera's attached to the ceiling. Okay, great. And uh, I'm on the floor. Oh, so I as like you get adapted, you find like that out right away. Nice. Uh, there's a question, have you ever danced in space, and will you show us what a little dance is like right now? Okay, the uh, answer to the first one is no, I have not danced in space, and uh, therefore I can't show you any dance that I would do, but there are certain things you can do in space that uh, dancers cannot do on the ground. Uh, it's not fair because I don't have to deal with gravity, but it's something like this. <laughs> and being scientists, we we love the demonstrations of angular momentum as well. So uh, that's uh, great. That's always fun to do. That's great, wonderful. Uh, do you often hit your head in uh, space? That's a question from uh, uh, Julia Julia twenty three. Julia Julia twenty three. That is a great question, and the answer is yes. Unfortunately, especially when you first get here, and then it's probably like a skier or a, a toddler learning to walk. Uh, the more confidence you get, the faster you go, and then you have to learn your lessons all over again. Um, so I don't, I don't whack my head on hatches anymore, but um, you know, you get busy, you lift your head up and you might hit a laptop. You see things all around us. So yeah, your head, head gets used to getting bonked quite a bit, and the, the more experience you get, the more you learn to look behind you uh, before you start to move around too much. Um, uh, I, we have one minute left, so just a couple more quick questions. Um, being up in space, does it make you think about humanity differently? 
Absolutely. Because the world is so beautiful from what we see, but we don't see um, the activity of the humans down there. Uh, we read about it. And it's, uh, all astronauts say this. You see the Earth, there's no borders. Uh, the atmosphere is only just about a, an inch thick if you hold your hand out and, and do your fingers like that. So it's, the Earth is an incredibly fragile, precious place where the humans live. And uh, so it, it, it gives you a lot of love for not only the planet, but for the humans on it. And uh, you wish, sometimes I wish we could uh, uh, behave better sometimes down there, but ultimately it gives you a lot of uh, a thrill and a lot of confidence in the future of the human race. Human race. Well, our band is called 30 Seconds to Mars, and uh, someone wants to know if we'll ever actually be 30 Seconds to Mars. Oh, I, I think it's, there's no question at all. The question is when. Uh, Mars is uh, kind of a sister or a brother to the planet Earth, along with Venus. A uh, lot to learn there. And that seems to be a, a logical place for humans to go someday. So I, I think there's no question we will be. Well, maybe you can make a dream come true and just say our band name from space one time so we can have it blasted out to the universe. Well, Jared and uh, Shannon and Tomo of 30 Seconds to Mars, great talking to you today. Welcome on board the space station, and uh, really enjoyed uh, having a few moments with you. Thank you. Hey, you've made a dream come true, all of you guys here. So NASA, thank you. We love you guys. We'll see you, see you next time. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much. We're all waving to you and, and, and smiling uh, uh, ear to ear. This has been a pleasure, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see you another time. Thanks so much, and safe travels. Thank you very much. Yeah, you all travel safely, too. Space, this is uh, Mission Control Houston. This concludes the event. We're now resuming operational audio communication.